Now for our second class, we're going to talk about the bidding as the responder to a one of a suit opener. But before we do that, I thought we'd just talk a little bit more generally about bidding and you know what the function of the bidding really is. So come with me. Now there are really two main purposes of the bidding. And the first one is trying to find a trump fit with your partner, a match. And experience has proved that eight out of the 13 cards in a particular suit is sufficient to make that suit the trump suit for the partnership. And it could be split four cards in each hand, or five cards in one hand and three cards in the other hand, or six cards in one hand and two cards in the other hand. So bear that in mind. Eight cards between the partnership make a fit. Now, that's really the first goal of the bidding. Second goal of the bidding, once the fit has been found, is to assess how many tricks to go for and whether or not to go for game. Now let's just remind ourselves of the scoring in the game of bridge. Clubs and diamonds, the two minor suits, each score at 20 points a trick. And so to get game, game is 100 points, you need to bid and make five clubs or five diamonds, quite a tall order. Hearts and spades, the two major suits, they score at 30 points a trick, so four hearts and four spades will get you to the 100 points for game. And no trumps, because the first no trump scores at 40, even though subsequent no trumps revert to 30, you only need to bid three no trumps to score game. So, just to review, the first goal of the bidding is to try to find a fit, eight cards between the partners, partnership and the second goal of the bidding is to see whether or not they can go for game. Good. Now we're going to have a look at some uh, responding hands and explore all the possibilities. So let us say that Guy has opened the bidding one spade. So now the question is what do we think that Cheryl should bid? Let's think about those two goals of the bidding. First of all, to try to find a fit. Now, Guy's opened the bidding one spade, so he must have at least four cards in spades. Cheryl has four cards in spades, and four and four make the fit. So now the next question that Cheryl faces is, can the partnership go for game? Now, Cheryl has 13 points in her hand. She know she knows that Guy has opened the bidding and therefore has at least 12 points and 12 and 13 give 25. Now 25 is a very important number because experience has proved that at any rate for the three games that require fewer tricks, that's three no trumps, four hearts and four spades, that 25 partnership points is sufficient to attempt one of those games. So what do we think that Cheryl should bid? Well, the answer is that Cheryl can go straight to four spades. Perfect. And that's the game bid in spades that one would expect to make most of the time. Good. Now let me make Cheryl's hand weaker. Now, again, Guy opens the bidding one spade. Does Cheryl have to bid at all? She's only got six points. It's not a very good hand. If there was no chance of having the 25 points for game, then Cheryl would just leave it. However, when Guy opens one spade, although he may have, have as few as just 12 points, he may have as many as 19. If he had a 20th point, he would open at the level of two. But he could have 19 points, and 19 plus six makes 25. And so, because game is still in the picture, Cheryl should reply. And that is essentially a rule. If you have six or more points and your partner opens the bidding, you must respond to your partner. If your partner opens the bidding, one of a suit, that is. Good. Now, what do we think Cheryl should bid? The message she'd like to give to Guy is that she's got a relatively weak hand but that she does like her partner's spades. With four card support for spades, she knows that they have a fit. So 
the bid that expresses those feelings is two spades. That's the fewest spades that she can bid, so it shows that she's only just got sort of six, seven, eight, something like that points, and support for partners' spades. Now it's always nice to have four cards to raise your partner's one spade to two spades, but there will be occasions, such as here, where it's still correct to support your partner's spades with just three cards. But it's worth stressing here that whereas a single major suit raise, one spade, two spades, is consistent with just having three cards, provided they're reasonable ones as here, a jump raise, one spade, three spades, or one spade, four spades, must contain at least four cards. A bit of one spade, three spades says, partner, we have a guarantee of eight cards in spades. A bit of one spade, two spades says, partner, I have three or four spades. And partner, if you're looking for a game and you've only got four spades in your hand, you can't absolutely rely on me for four, so you better perhaps test the water somewhere else, perhaps by bidding no trumps or something. Good. Now, let's make Cheryl's hand stronger. Now, what do we think that Cheryl might do this time? She's got a good hand. She knows spades are trumps. She hasn't quite got enough to go straight to four spades, however, because with 11 points facing a partner who may only have 12, game values may not quite be there. There may not quite be 25 points between the partnership. But nonetheless, Cheryl wants to encourage her partner to go on to game should her partner have just a little bit more than a minimum. And so the solution for Cheryl with this hand is to jump to three spades. Good. That's a strongly invitational to game bid. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to more formally collate what we've learned about how strong you have to be to bid particular numbers in support of your partner's opened suit. The responder's support line. How strong a hand do you have to have to bid particular numbers in support of your partner's opening? Now you see here, with less than six points, you pass, even if you have got four or more cards with your partner. I suppose if you have a really good supporting hand, you might borrow a point if you had sort of five points and scratch up a raise to two uh, in support of your partner. With six to nine points, you would raise from partner's one level opener to two. Ten to twelve points, one here, one spade, three spades. And with thirteen or more points, that's enough to go straight to game, one spade, four spades, provided, of course, that you have the four cards in support for your partner. Now, this is a good guide, but be prepared to upgrade your hand if you have an interesting distribution. I'm not going to be recommending that we add on points for length and shortage, um, but uh, do be aware when you're supporting your partner that having side suits which are very short can be a huge asset to partner. And approximately speaking, a singleton in a side suit is worth about three points and a void, no cards at all, in a side suit is worth about five points. So don't be a slave. Don't merely count your high card points when you're deciding how many to bid in support of your partner. Look at the shape of your hand as well. So let's return to the table now. Now, if Cheryl had this hand, 11 high card points, four card support for partner spades, but crucially with a singleton in hearts, she should mentally upgrade her hand. And rather than bid three spades, which would show between 10 and 12 points with four card support for partner spades, instead, Cheryl would go straight to four spades. Good. So that's when you are supporting your partner. The more you bid, the better your hand. One spade, two spades, six to nine. One spade, three spades, ten to twelve. One spade, four spades, thirteen plus.
Most of the time, though, when your partner opens the bidding in a suit, you don't have four or more cards in the suit that your partner opened. Now, what do you think your strategy should be then? Let's think about the bidding. The first goal of the bidding is to try to find a fit. So if you haven't already found one, then you try to find one. And you do that by essentially bidding your longest suit at the lowest level. So now let's, let's look at a different situation. Let's say this time Guy opens the bidding uh, one club. Now, a principle that we will be meeting again is that you should be bidding a suit to a suit as a responder. Wherever possible, you should avoid bidding no trumps to a suit bid from the opener because you are trying to find a fit as your first priority. You can always ultimately settle in no trumps. But you should be bidding a suit to a suit and the correct response with this hand is one heart. And that's not a particularly strong statement that you wish hearts to be trumps, as you see. All you're showing is four or more hearts, potentially very moderate ones, as here, and six or more points. Good. Longest suit at lowest level when you can't fit your partner. That's the essence of the strategy for the responder. I could make the responder's hand a good deal stronger. Now here, Cheryl has 15 points. In fact, Cheryl knows that the partnership are going to go for game because 15 points facing a partner who can open gives at least the 25 points that you need. But there's no rush. I see many auctions go off the rails when the responder is too eager to show the strength of his hand before a trump suit is found. Remember, take things in the right order. Try to find the fit first before showing the strength of your hand. And so even with this 15-point hand, Cheryl would say one heart as here. Longest suit at lowest level. Good. Now, I'll get us back to reality again with a more moderate hand. Now, guys opened the bidding one club, and this time Cheryl has two four-card suits. And the question is, which one should she bid? The principle is to try to find any fit that exists. And to this end, the responder should bid the cheaper of her four-card suits. It's called bidding up the line. You won't miss a fit as a responder if you respond with this hand one diamond. Don't worry. A heart fit won't go begging because if partner's got hearts to back up his clubs, then partner will bid now one heart. So that's the principle. When you have two four-card suits, you bid the cheaper one first. Let's change Cheryl's hand a little bit. I've given Cheryl now a nice long diamond suit. Well, it's longer more than it's nice. But um, she has now six cards in diamonds. And I'm sure you'll all, all agree with me that the correct response for Cheryl here is one diamond. Do you think Cheryl was quite fortunate here that her partner bid a lower ranked suit that enabled her to bid one diamond. She was fortunate. How about, Guy, if you were to open one heart? Now, Cheryl can't bid her diamonds at the one level, and the question is, would it be sensible for her to bid her diamonds at the two level? I can see that things could go a little bit off the rails if she does. Let's say, for example, that Guy has a hand with five hearts and four clubs. His bidding strategy would be his hearts and then his clubs. So if Cheryl were to respond two diamonds to the one heart bid, if, and then Guy were to say three clubs, well, how would we feel now? The whole thing's going to end in tears, isn't it? Or at any rate, we're going to be writing a score uh, above the line on the opposing side. So this is not a strong enough hand to respond in a new suit at the two level. Raising the level to two with no assurance of a fit requires more strength than responding in a new suit at the one level. 
and there's a very useful guideline I've got for you here that will tell the responder whether or not he has a strong enough hand to bid a new suit at the two level. And it's a combination of the strength of his hand in terms of the number of points he holds and also the length of the suit that he's planning to bid. Come with me. It's called the rule of 14. This tells the responder whether he has a strong enough hand to bid a new suit at the two level in response to his partner's one of a suit opener. He adds up the number of high card points in his hand to the number of cards that he holds in the suit that he's planning to respond. And the question is, does the total get to 14 or more? If the answer is yes, then it's worth the two over one response. But if the answer is no, then we have to find an alternative response because we have to respond with six or more points. We can't pass. We can't go to the two level. We fail the rule of 14. So the issue is, what can we do? Well, let's go back to Cheryl's hand and see how she solves the problem. So we can't bid two diamonds, sadly. So now the question is going to be, what should Cheryl do? Let's just check she can't bid two diamonds. Well, she's got one, two, three, four, five, six cards in diamonds and seven points. She's one short, it's what we thought, isn't it? She hasn't quite got enough strength to bid a new suit at the two level. And so she has to find another solution. Perhaps she'd like to pass but Guy could have 18, 19 points and then that would result in missing the game. Can't bid a new suit at the two level, cannot bid a suit with only three cards in it, and so there's only one option left, and that's to respond one no trump. Now, as I said earlier, the responder avoids wherever possible responding no trumps to a suit bid, and indeed should never respond with a jump to two no trumps or with a jump to three no trumps. The one no trump response, however, we do occasionally have to make. This is when we have a hand that fails the rule of 14. But I don't want you to think of it as a proper no trump bid. I mean, here, for example, Cheryl doesn't have a balanced hand. She has two doubletons. It's just a stalling manoeuvre. It's often called the dustbin bid because it's where you put all the hands that don't fit anywhere else. And in practice, you'll have six, seven, eight, or occasionally nine points in order to make that one no trump response. And partner's aspirations will now be dampened. Let's see how the auction might continue after that. Now, after our one no trump, assuming the opponents are silent, Guy has another bid. He makes his natural rebid, and it's in fact, in this case, two clubs. And, uh, and now, what do we think Cheryl could do? You see, if she were to introduce her diamonds at this point to bid two diamonds, having gone via the dustbin one no trump, then the message that she's giving her partner is that she's got a long string of diamonds but a very poor hand. And so Guy would be well advised at this point to reach in for the green card. And this is the way that Cheryl can play in just two diamonds. She has to be careful and go via the dustbin one no trump response. If she makes the mistake of forgetting about the rule of 14 and immediately responds two diamonds and then Guy bids three clubs because the two diamond bid immediately forces Guy to speak again. So if he does then bid three clubs, well, where are we going to go? We're just going minus, aren't we? So it's a very, very useful guideline for the responder, that the rule of 14, it tells responder whether or not he can bid a new suit at the two level in response to partner's one of a suit bid. And if he can't, then remember that dustbin one no, one no trump response. Now let's just tamper with uh, Cheryl's hand slightly. Let's take away a diamond and add a heart to her hand. Do you think she would bid differently? 
Well, I don't think that she would bid like this because when Guy bid hearts and then clubs, he was showing nine cards in those two suits. Do you remember a player bidding two suits? Shows five and four in those suits, at least. So I don't think Guy's going to have very many diamonds. I think Cheryl should have at least six cards in diamonds to be introducing them at this point. So the issue is, what should she bid at this point? And Cheryl knows exactly what to bid because partner has shown, as we say, five hearts and four clubs. So here, Cheryl can go back to hearts knowing that they have an eight card fit. And indeed, there was another option for Cheryl, which is to raise one heart to two hearts immediately because a single major raise doesn't absolutely guarantee the four cards. Either of those two routes is fine, but what is not fine is for her to respond immediately two diamonds to the one heart opening bid. Good. Let's, let's take away a heart and let's add a club to Cheryl's hand. Now she would respond one no trump, two partners, one heart. And what would she do when Guy then rebid two clubs. Well, there's no ideal solution now. I wouldn't bid the diamonds facing partners likely shortage. I would have to decide between two possibilities. One would be just to leave it past the two club bid. Guy has five hearts and four clubs, so we have at least seven clubs. The other option is to put Guy back to hearts because we know he's got at least five cards in hearts. And on a Monday, one might be right, and on a Wednesday, the other might be right. Um, that's one of the beauties of bridge. Sometimes there is no uh, absolutely right answer. It's just a feel thing. Let's, uh, let's take away a club and add a spade. Now, would Cheryl actually respond one no trump with that hand? And the answer is no, because if you've got a suit that you can bid at the one level, a higher ranking suit, then you don't need to satisfy any rules of 14. You just need six or more points and four or more cards. So with this hand, Cheryl would respond one spade. And that's really the essence of responding to a suit opener. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at a flow chart that will guide us through the essence of that strategy. Come with me. Now here we are. This is the first question responder has to ask. Does he have six or more points? Because if the answer is no, then there can be no game because partner's maximum is 19 points, so they cannot have the 25 points per game. So pass. But let's say responder does have six or more points. What's his highest priority? Fit. Fit first. So if he's got four cards in the suit that his partner opened, then he's going to support his partner. And the more he bids, the better his hand. So here we are. This is the responder support line. Six to nine points, raise partner's one opener to two. Ten to twelve points, raise it to three. And with thirteen or more points, you can go straight to four. But let's assume that the responder hasn't got a known fit. In that case, he's trying to find a fit and he does this by bidding his longest suit at the lowest level. Well, at least that's his plan. However, if his suit is lower ranked, if his suit is lower ranked than his partner's opener, then he is actually going to have to raise the level up to two. Now, in order to make a two over one response, he needs to have a little extra strength. He needs to satisfy this guideline we've been talking about, the rule of 14. The number of points in his hand added to the number of cards in his suit should get to 14 or more. Then it's OK to respond in a new suit at the two level. But if his hand fails the rule of 14, then he has to bear in mind that special dustbin one no trump bid. Now, just to finish up the class, we're going to look at three 
most important aspects to responding to one of a suit opening bids. And we see here, first of all, remember the responder support line. One spade, two spades, six to nine. One spade, three spades, ten to twelve. One spade, four spades, thirteen or more. The more you bid, the better your hand. Secondly, don't bid no trumps to partner's suit opening bid unless you absolutely have to. And that will be when you're bidding the dustbin one no trump. Avoid jumping from one heart to two no trumps or from one heart to three no trumps. Far better to bid a suit to a suit and progress the auction more naturally. And thirdly, remember the rule of 14. If you're bidding a two over one or planning to bid a two over one because your suit is lower ranked than your partner, then you have to satisfy this guideline. The points in your hand plus the number of cards in your suit should get to at least 14. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed our class on responding to suit opening bids. Now, in this situation here,